on here, guys? And today we're talking about Express LRS. That is the open source control link. Control all of your RC aircraft, including your quadcopters and drones. And let me tell you, I am absolutely loving this thing. Uh, I didn't think you would ever get Crossfire pried away from my hands. Uh, the super secure signal of Crossfire, the long range of Crossfire, the ease of use of Crossfire. But Express LRS offers a lot of those features for a much lower price point and it's super convenient in certain scenarios. Now here's where I'm gonna tell you, spoiler alert, for anything freestyle or long range, I'm still sticking with Crossfire. I have Crossfire on this. I'm testing another XID right now just for grins. But basically for anything micro or racing, I'm putting Express LRS on there and I'm gonna tell you why. But first let's talk about the setup. The setup at first was very clunky and you had to do a lot of weird flashing things. Now the new receivers, the EP1 and the EP2 are super easy because they have a Wi-Fi chip installed. So you download the Express LRS configurator, you connect to Wi-Fi with the module, then you flash it to your settings. You put all the settings on the app, you create a bin file, for the device, you create one for the TX module that you have, then you create one for each receiver that you have, receiver type. The other nice thing is that you create a binding phrase on there. So you put your own binding phrase on there, that means you never have to touch another bind button again. You flash your TX with the binding phrase, then you try flash any receiver with that binding phrase. When you power both of those up, they're automatically bound to each other. So that's really nice. Now, one thing that is a little bit trickier is it's Crossfire is a little bit easier in that you can automatically update via the TX module. You can't do that with Express LRS. You need to connect to Wi-Fi to it, either with a computer or with your phone. I find it's a little bit easier to do with a computer on the bench. The nice thing about that is you don't need your radio with you when you're flashing a new receiver. A lot of times my radio is in the garage or somewhere, so I don't have to go get it. I can just connect the receiver to Wi-Fi drag that bin file that I've created already for the EP2, which is pretty much the main receiver I'm gonna use. I've also tried the EP1, that's the one with the little antenna, but the EP2 with the ceramic is really what I'm using for my purposes. It's not gonna be the longest range solution, but again, I'm only using it for micros and for racing quads. Now, the other notable thing is that the price of the module is about $25 to $28. Super cheap for this thing. Speaking of super cheap though, this is a printed um, module bay. There's a, a one that's actually injection molded, but I feel like they both don't fit very well. Here's what I did to get the fitment a little bit better. I took a little double-sided mounting tape. I pulled out the little tab, put that in there to kind of make the little tab arm stick out a little better. That really helped to keep it seated. If not, you don't want a lot of wiggling going on. It's still not 100% solid, but it does not ever come unloose. I do like that the antenna on here is smaller, and of course on the quad side, these things are so tiny. This also brings the cost per quad for any of the quads that are using the system on from $30 per quad for a receiver down to I've seen the prices of these $11.99 to $13 so it brings the cost per quad down significantly it brings the amount of space that you need for mounting down significantly and the antenna mounting forget about it it's so quick and easy so I'm now going to be using two modules that's kind of why I have two radios because the only downside is I hate that I have to take this out put my crossfire module on whenever I'm flying a crossfire model. So I'm gonna try to convert all of my racing fleet to this so that when I race, I only bring this out with me. And when I go freestyle or do anything larger, I bring the crossfire and that's gonna be what I'm gonna be doing moving forward. What do you think in the comments, guys? I really love being able to have a cheap, small, tiny, easy to use receiver system for the micros. I review a ton of micros on this channel and the SPI receivers on whoops and stuff are absolute garbage. But putting a crossfire receiver on there really helps helps tremendously with the range and the feel and the connection that you feel with the quad. But that antenna, even the smaller one, is just so large for something whoop size. This is perfect. Speaking of whoop size, I actually have the whoop board with an integrated um, Express LRS receiver on there. We're gonna be covering that on the channel, so stay tuned and subscribe if you wanna see that. These are both open racers. This one has Express LRS in here. And what do you notice? Absolutely 
zero antenna mounting anywhere. That's because the antenna is up inside here. And then here is uh, one of my DJI racing builds, also an open racer. And you can see that I have the antenna mounted here. Now people try it in different ways. Some people mount them on the arms, um, whatever. People are moving to Tracer, but you still have these little antennas out here that are gonna get banged up in a crash. There is no antenna to get banged up here at all. This is perfectly good for racing distances and I'm really, really loving it. And on things like micros, you can see here that this quad has an FR Sky XM Plus. So the price is low. Look at the antennas are already chewed up because it's like, what do you do with them? Do you kind of tape them to this? Like, what do you do? See how small that little Express LRS is. I had the larger Crossfire in there. And this is the EP1, which has the little tiny antenna, uh, which goes perfectly. I think for, I tried this one out, it works great. It's probably got a little bit more range, but for more most purposes, I would pick the EP2. Here again, we have the EP2 with the tiny ceramic antenna. Look how little space it takes up inside this build. Here is the same type of build with the Crossfire in there and see how much more room that takes and not just that though the majority of the space savings is for the antenna mounting you have to have a place to mount that antenna the immortal t whereas this you have absolutely no antenna mounting so that saves you the weight of a couple of zip ties if you're on one of those other systems and let's face it guys we run our video transmitters uh, for racing on 25 milliwatt so you don't need a lot of range the other cool thing is express l LRS has 500 hertz refresh rate. Remember the video that we made the other day talking about if humans could even perceive 500 hertz refresh rate and Ghost was testing it out in a beta version of their firmware? Well, this has it out of the box. So it's smaller, it's cheaper, has a faster refresh rate. The connection to the quad feels great. What do you think in the comments? Are you gonna be trying Express LRS? I don't think it's a replacement for Crossfire. If you love Crossfire, again, I'm gonna be moving forward with both but uh if you're just starting and you want something that's easy and inexpensive and small i could see going straight here instead of straight to crossfire i mean it just depends if you're going to be flying a long range or you're going to be flying in bandos and you need that penetration then definitely go straight to crossfire but any other scenario express all the rest the open source devs on that team are doing amazing amazing things nice job on that thanks guys